become abnormal, they get precancerous and if they are not identified and treated can progress into full-fledged cancer. In Bahrain, it is the eighth most common cause of cancer in women. Cancer can be seen in women who are in their 20s as well. Annually, there are 22 cases detected and the new data suggests that there are around 12 cancer deaths per year. Our skin is the mirror of our soul. Our skin is our largest sensory organ. Our skin needs a healthy microbiome balance. This is regulated by its pH value, which protects the skin from pathogens, cold and ultraviolet rays. Sebamet protects your skin. Good evening, dear friends. Welcome to today's episode of BMC Global Live Al Hilal Health World, Nothing But Lifestyle, a talk show with the expert doctors of Al Hilal hospitals and medical centers. This January, as we observe Cervical Cancer Awareness Month, we are focusing on education, early detection, and prevention of cervical cancer. It's a type of cancer that is preventable and treatable if detected early. And the doctor joining us today is Dr. Aisha Sayed Khasi from Al Hilal Hospital, Adalia branch. She is a specialist in obstetrics and gynecology. Doctor, welcome to the show. Hi, Jasila. Thank you for having me. So, Doctor, this is the month of cervical cancer awareness. So, can you speak about cervical cancer and how it develops in our body? So, uh, cancer cervix uh, is the abnormal growth of cells of the cervix. Now, cervix is the neck of the womb or the part of the womb which opens up into the vagina. Cervical cancer develops over a period of years from when the cells undergo changes from being normal, they be become abnormal, they get precancerous and if they are not identified and treated, can progress into full-fledged cancer. Uh, doctor, how common is cervical cancer, uh, especially in our region among the women? Cervical cancer is the fourth most common gynecological cancer among the women as per the World Health Organization. In developing countries, it is one of the leading cause of death among women. In developed nations where there are regular screening programs and vaccination drives, the rate of cervical cancer is found to be decreasing. In Bahrain, it is the eighth most common cause of cancer in women. On an average, 
annually there are 22 cases detected and the new data suggests that there are around 12 cancer deaths per year. Though this is less as compared to the global average, but it is still significant because these cancers can be detected and treated well by regular screening programs. Doctor, who is at most risk of developing this cervical cancer? Risk factors for cervical cancer include persistent infection with human papilloma virus, that's the HPV virus, smoking, having multiple sexual partners, partners with multiple sexual partners, the immune response is not strong enough, or if the virus is of high risk strain and there is a persistent infection. Health factors that increase a woman's risk of developing this cancer. If a woman is smoking, if the woman has multiple sexual partners or partners with multiple sexual partners, if the woman is infected with HIV virus and she's immunocompromised, and she's, if a woman is not attending her regular pap smear screenings, uh, getting investigated for HPV virus, those factors put the woman at risk of developing uh, cancer cervix. Normally around what age women are prone to? Uh, this cancer? The peak age of diagnosis of cervical cancer is usually mid 30s to mid 40s, that is 35 to 45 years of age. Cancer can be seen in women who are in their 20s as well. It is very rare before 20 years of age, but it is definitely not a disease which is limited to the old. Uh, you know, Doctor, what are the early warning signs women should never ignore? If a woman is having abnormal bleeding, like if she is bleeding in between her periods after sexual intercourse or a postmenopausal bleeding, that is a woman is bleeding after her menopause, such bleeding needs to be evaluated. If a woman is having offensive vaginal discharge, she is having unexplained weight loss, swelling of the limbs, loss of appetite, all these symptoms also warrant investigations. Now, all these symptoms doesn't necessarily mean that woman has cancer, but it means that these symptoms should not be ignored. And is it possible for a woman to have cervical cancer without any symptoms? Yes, it is definitely possible because cervical cancer, especially in its early stages, does not produce any symptoms at all. Women can be very healthy by themselves. They have regular periods, no offensive discharge, and yet there would be cells which are going changes and are going changes and they're becoming precancers. And that is why screening is important because screening picks up these cells even before the symptoms appear in the woman. Doctor, what are the tests that are done for screening and how often should a woman go for the tests? So there are two main tests which, which we offer as a part of the screening for cervical cancer. Uh, they are the HPV test and the pap test. The pap test involves examining the cervical cells and seeing if there are any abnormal changes. Now, it basically detects the cells before uh, they become cancerous, that is precancerous, and also they identify the cancerous cells. The second test is the HPV test, which is which detects the human papilloma virus, uh, especially the high risk strains, which are responsible for almost 90% of the cervical cancers. Another important question is, can cervical cancer be prevented? Yes. Cervical cancer can be prevented by avoidance of smoking, having safe sexual practices, by HPV vaccination, and by attending regular uh, pap smear screening tests. Oh, you mentioned about HPV vaccination. How effective is HPV vaccination in preventing uh, cervical cancer? HPV vaccine is highly effective in preventing uh, cervical cancer. As we know, more than 90% of cervical cancers are caused due to persistent infection with high risk strains of HPV. And 70% of them are caused by persistent infection with HPV 16 and 18 alone. Now, by, prevent, by giving vaccination, we are preventing the infection with the high risk strains and preventing the occurrence of the cancer cervix. Now, vaccination is very effective if it is given from 9 to 14 years of age that is before the sexual activity because at this age there is also a strong immune response and two doses of the vaccine will be enough. Uh, doctor, now we know that if detected early, cervical cancer can be treated. What are the treatment options available now? The early cancer is the cancer which is limited to cervix itself and has not spread to distant organs. 
The various treatment modalities available for early cancer include conization, uh, trachelectomy that is removal of cervix in a part of vagina, hysterectomy that is removal of the uterus. There are other different modalities available like radiotherapy, chemotherapy and immunotherapy and this depends on the stage of the disease. Doctor, after treatment, can women still have children? Yes, women can have children but it largely depends on the stage of the disease and also the kind of treatment she has had. Uh, if the treatment was uh, limited to the cervix as in case of as a conization or trachelectomy, uh, the uterus is preserved and she can still bear a child. There are various other uh, things a doctor can do like transpositioning the ovaries, um, protecting the eggs, embryo freezing, uh, all these uh, can also make it possible for women to have children but it is advised uh, to avoid pregnancy in the first two years after getting treatment because that's the time when there, are, there is a maximum recurrence of the cancer. Uh, how can families and communities support women to get screened? The families and communities have a very large role in getting the women screened. The family uh, should encourage the women to attend to her routine gynecological examination, have regular pap smear tests, and if any abnormal cells are identified, if she needs additional procedures, uh, the family should support uh, to the women to get all of those done. As a community, we should uh, normalize the conversation around this topic, make information available to women, uh, make, um, make ensure that uh, they realize that screening is not a painful procedure, it's not a risky procedure. It can be a part of a routine gynecological examination. Uh, it doesn't take much time and uh, also educate uh, young women uh, that vaccination does prevent infection with high risk strains and it's very highly effective. It's been studied worldwide. Millions of women have got the vaccine and uh, a lo lot of global authorities uh, are checking on the safety of the vaccine. And finally, doctor, what is the one message you want the women to keep in mind this Cervical Cancer Awareness Month? The one message I want the women to take home is cervical cancer is preventable. To have regular pap smears as scheduled, to get HPV virus tested, and do not wait for the symptoms uh, to get screened. And before we wind up, doctor, what do you have to say about Al Hilal Healthcare Service? Al Hilal is uh, the fastest growing healthcare service in the kingdom, and I'm delighted to be a part of it. At Al Hilal, uh, we have uh, pap smear testing available, HPV testing available. We also have colposcopy services, that is uh, the examination of the cervix using a colposcope if there are any abnormal cells detected. We also have uh, the vaccines available. So I would uh, encourage all the women in the kingdom to visit us, get yourself screened and take the vaccine. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you very much. Thank you. So viewers, as we come to the end of today's discussion, remember that cervical cancer is one of the most preventable and treatable forms of cancer. Awareness, regular screening and vaccination can save lives. I hope this episode was helpful. For more informative episodes, tune into BMC Global Live Al Hilal Health World every Tuesdays at 8 p.m. Till we meet again in the next episode with a new doctor and a new topic. This is Jessila Mujib signing off. Good night. Our skin is the mirror of our soul. Our skin is our largest sensory organ. 
our skin needs a healthy microbiome balance. This is regulated by its pH value, which protects the skin from pathogens, cold and ultraviolet rays. Sebamet protects your skin.